Welcome back to Drolla's Garage. The other day I posted a video on this car and I had a lot of people asking me about this lip. I don't know anything about it. I don't know where it came from. I don't know who made it. It's like a 964 style uh, lip, you know, like the, um, the 964 has that retractable spoiler and that looks just like the lip that goes on it. Now, I don't know if that's an original 964 part or what. So I figured, you know what? Let's make a video about it. Let's take that off and find out what it is. Cause I'm kind of curious myself. Never seen one before like that added to the top of the deck lid of an SC. I know the SC emblem is still down here. So we'll see now when I take this off what I find. I have no idea. So let's take a look. Only thing I'm gonna do first is turn the car around, stick the back end of it in the shade over there cause the sun is kind of bright. So uh, I'll get the car turned around and uh, let's take that thing off. Let's see what happens. Oh, another thing people were asking about was that little air scoop. I didn't know those things were such a mystery. Um, they've been around forever. Uh, Pelican Parts sells them. It's basically an air scoop that directs air directly into the oil cooler. Now this car has a, I don't know if you can see it here, but anyway, whatever. It's got a 3.2 Carrera style oil cooler up there, as you can see. And um, this little scoop here, directs air directly into that uh into that cooler so i don't know i got a lot of comments about that i didn't think uh i thought those were more commonly known it's not a brake duct it's a, an oil cooler duct now there's another company called actum craft that's also making those i don't know if this one in particular this one's probably the pelican parts one because uh, i know it's been on there for a while i don't think actum craft has been making them for that long but um but that's what that is it's just a scoop, an air scoop, to help the car run cooler. So here we are. Uh, as you can see, it still has one T-bolt here, and then the others are Phillips screws. Why? I'm not entirely sure, but that's the way it is. I have uh, the rest of those T-bolts. So I'm gonna get this off, and hopefully I can just put the normal T-bolts in there instead of those, uh, those Phillips screws. Uh, let's see here. We got some nuts and um, I'll probably have to get this guy off here to undo the condenser for the air conditioner or maybe this one here and this one here to give me some space to get underneath there. So let, let's check it out. Let's see what happens. I brought the car inside because uh, there was just too much glare outside uh, with the, you know, with the light coming in from out there. So let me grab a uh, full screwdriver, start taking that apart. Let's see what happens. So here it is, um, it's off, I don't know, really don't know what to make of it. Uh, it doesn't seem to have any markings. I mean, definitely it's an aftermarket piece, but I don't know, I, I, I'm at a loss for words here. I guess I could ask, but uh, yeah, there's no, no markings on this thing at all. So it is what it is. I mean, it's not horrible looking, but it doesn't belong on the car. So let's see what we're left with here. Uh, man, see it, it, it scratched up the paint here as if the paint was all that great to begin with. Uh, I still think I'm probably better off leaving it out. And then I'm gonna have to just obviously give this a good wash. And yeah, I'll be left with a mark here from this gorgeous paint job that somebody did who should be arrested for vandalism. How could somebody paint a beautiful 911 this terribly? Here also. But uh, okay, what can I do? I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. 
So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the grill back here where it goes, button everything up, get that condenser back in place and everything. I'll put the grill back on with the proper T-bolts like it's supposed to have. And that's it. All right, so I got all the T-bolts here. I'll put them in place. T-bolts. Why are they called, called T-bolts, you ask? That's why it's called a T-bolt. Oh. There's six of them. That these girls take. That's number five. And number six. All right. Time to put it here. Actually, you know, these guys are some kind of rubber, rubber washers or something. And that goes just like that. All right, guys, I need my hands. Okay, got the condenser and everything back on. There we go. That looks a lot better. I'm gonna clean this up again. There's nothing I don't think I'm gonna be able to do about some of that mark, those markings on there. I think a good wash will help a lot, but uh, that definitely looks better. So, I gotta pull this thing outside and uh, get the hose out and everything, give it a quick wash. And here we can see it in the daylight. Uh, again, I still have to clean it. Still gonna wash it. See how much of this crud I can get off. But yeah, that looks a lot better. Much, much, much better. I forgot about one other thing I need to do to this car. The high beam uh, stock here is always on high beam. So when you turn the key on, you turn the lights on, you always have the high beams off. So you got to pull this thing back a little bit. It's a fairly common, I don't know if you can see there, fairly common issue with these old cars. And basically to fix it, you got to take this off, take this apart, and there's some contacts in there because one of them is just making contact when it shouldn't be. So you got to take this off and just, uh, you know, undo those contacts. Just, you know, bend the tab a little bit so that it doesn't make contact when it's not supposed to. So I got to do that right now because um, I want to drive this car at night and uh, with the high beams on, it's just, uh, you know, other drivers aren't going to appreciate it very much. So let me get to that right now. I'm gonna fix that. I guess I should have gotten into some little more detail. Uh, to get that, I got to take the steering wheel off. I need to get that nut out, make sure this is pointing up so that when I put it back, I make sure that I put it in the right orientation, get that nut out. From there, there's uh, four little flathead screws back in here and then there's two little flathead screws on each side here that clamshell comes out and then i believe there's two more screws that hold the actual stock in so um yeah should take me about three minutes with the turn signal stock off you see those contacts there and see how i mean again i'm trying to do this one-handed but depending on what what you do with this lever is what makes contact in those little contacts there. So I have to figure out which one it is. You see that? I have to figure out which one it is that's constantly making contact and bend the little tab just, 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 just a tiny little bit to get it to, um, to not make contact. So when the lights are on, I don't have the high beams on. So from what I'm seeing, the bottom most tab there, um, the bottom one I have to bend it down just a little bit because as you can see it's constantly making contact 
So, this is really hard to do with, uh, with only one hand. But, um, you see, it's making contact and it's not supposed to. That little guy right there, this one here, I have to bend it down. So, anyway, I, I, I'm going to have to put this phone down because I'm going to need both of my hands to do that. So that's it. Super easy fix. Most people go crazy trying to figure that out. They replace these. They spend a bunch of money when really all it is is you got to just bend one little tab and that's it. Five minute fix and it's free. <laughs> but a workshop would tell you otherwise. So, oh no, you need a whole new stock. Your whole electrical system is fried and we're going to charge you $500 million to replace it all. So no, no workshops. I fix things which is kind of rare these days. People don't fix things anymore, they just replace them. Okay, so I bent that one down a little bit, as you can see, now it's not making contact anymore. But when I switch on the high beam, look, now it does. See right there. And then I switch off the high beams, it doesn't make contact anymore. However, I also had to bend this one over here that little guy right there because then when you pull back and done that's it steering wheel back on everything works lights work i don't know if you can see that up there you're probably not but flash the high beams turn signal i mean i didn't have any problems with the turn signals anyway but yeah everything works all good that's gonna do it for today's video uh i think the car looks a lot better without that little thing there on the duct on the duct on the uh, deck lid as you can see i mean okay it's not perfect you see the line here where that thing kind of dug in and left a little thing there but hey you know what the paint on this car isn't perfect to begin with so what's one more little defect you know uh reality is the car needs a paint job uh it looks great from here though let me tell you from that from this distance which i'm about six seven feet away it's a nice looking car anyway it is what it is hope you guys enjoyed today's video on uh that deck lid. a lot of people asked me about that i was surprised i didn't really give pay too much mind i mean obviously i knew it was there but i didn't really give it a lot of thought you know but uh, a lot of people took notice and they asked so i figured why not take it off uh maybe somebody wants it i don't know uh, what's that thing worth i have no idea uh let me know if somebody wants it hit me up uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please subscribe. Please like. Uh, getting closer to those thousand subscribers. I'm at 700 and something. So, if uh, you know, if you guys can spread the word, uh, I need to get to those thousand subscribers. So I appreciate that. And uh, thanks for watching. And um, enjoy the rest of your day.